Good morning, good afternoon, uh, depending on where you are. Um, welcome to the Friday Fundamentals for Soft Plan uh, for June 24th, 2016. Um, what we're going to be doing today is uh, a Q&A. Um, I did get a question in. Um, I'm going to do my best to answer these questions. Uh, obviously, they came in an email format. And um, as you know, if, when we're doing tech support, sometimes we have a hard time understanding exactly what the question is. So I'll just ask you for a little bit of patience as I try to uh, decipher what the question is and give you the best option or options to address the questions that you have. Um, the first of all, the first one we have today involves railings on decks and porches. Uh, I'm going to address this in two different ways. Uh, one being a porch that has a concrete slab, a uh, typical front porch with maybe a, you know, the slab ex extended out or a cold room underneath it, depending on where you live. Um, also taking a look at when a railing is attached to an actual deck structure. So uh, they're a little bit different in how they operate, and we're just going to take a quick look at those. We're also going to take a look at uh, just quickly um, some of the differences between uh, the question came up, what's the difference between a plan set and a multi-drawing? So I'll take a look at that real quick. Um, how to add a facade to the front of an elevation that um, you might have drawn somewhere else and how you can accurately add that in. I'm going to take a look at a few different things that you may not even be aware of when doing that. So we're going to take a look at those things. Um, we're also going to take a look at how to change the frame colors on your windows. Uh, typically, they come up white. And uh, as we know, Things are changing. If you look at the Anderson catalog, they have you can put three different colors on your on your frames. Four, actually, I think you can go your, with your uh, sash, your frame, your bead, and your grill if you really wanted to uh, dress them up. So we're going to take a look at how you can change that in 3D. Okay, so um, a few things we're going to cover off today, and hopefully we can get through all of that. We've got about a half an hour to 45 minutes, um, and we're going to get started now and see if we can get through as much as we can. All right, so. Sit tight, and away we go. So I'm going to be just working on uh, one of our sample drawings. I uh, figured it was a good place to work. Uh, it's, a, it's a complete set of drawings, and it's something that's uh, already formed up. It has some of the components that we need in order to uh, take a closer look at some of the questions that were, that were sent in. For those of you who did send in questions, I thank you very much for doing so. Um, I thought I was going to have to make up some questions or take a look through our tech support uh, records and find some of the better questions that we get. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start on the front porch. Now, this is a front porch with a concrete slab on it. So if I just pop you into um, front porch, it's going to pop it open so you can see it in 3D. This will just pop us up, and it will show us um, roughly what we're dealing with initially. So it's a siding house. There's a bit of brick to the right there. And um, we've got a concrete slab at the front entry. And what we want to do is put a railing up this, this end here and between these two posts. And the question related to uh, how do I fit it between the, the posts, the thing to remember is that these posts are structural posts. They're holding up a beam that is sitting up inside this roof up here. So they are not your typical posts that would go on the end of a railing. Um, that's not to say you couldn't make those posts on the ends of your railing tall enough to support the beam, but they're not going to have the same uh, functionality as a structural post um, that will that will uh, fit to the underside of the beam and, and adjust accordingly. So we're going to have those drawn already, and then we're going to come in and infill in between those to, uh, to add our railings. So under draw, um, if you go to deck, um, you can go to railing. We have a few different options here. We have deck, porch, and stair. Uh, we're not doing a stair railing. It's not going to be attached to a stair. I'm going to put the porch railing on. Really the big difference here is that these ones are white. The deck ones are wood colored. So um, we're going to put in the, uh, the porch railing. We can pick whichever style we want. I'm just going to go with a standard colonial for now and pick OK. Now, the question was, how do I get this to position where I want it? Now, I may not hit this right on the nose the way the, way the, um, uh, the, the question was asked, but I'm going to take a look at a few different things. And then when we do go to the wood deck, you're going to see some other options. So uh, drawing this railing, I tend to use my snap modes quite a bit. So if you look up on the top toolbar, the fourth icon over is our cursor snap, also, also accessible quite easily by just hitting F11. I can turn it on and off up here. If it's highlighted in yellow, it's on. Okay, So if it's turned on, 
when I'm drawing, I will see a square, which indicates I've got an intersection. A triangle indicates I've got the midpoint. Okay. Um, we'll see some other options as we draw this. Uh, that's an intersection there as well. Okay. So a corner, uh, just a, a crossing intersection is an X, and then you've got your triangle here. So I'm just going to pick in the middle of this post, and I'm going to drag it out, and then you'll see what that little symbol is. If you can see that little red symbol at the top there, that's a perpendicular too, which is perfect because that's what we want. We want it to be perpendicular to that sided wall. So that will draw this railing perfectly centered on the post. That might be the best uh, way to deal with this. Um, same thing here. I click here. I drag it across. If I've got my post right, you know, placed correctly, uh, I should go to the midpoint here as well. If I didn't have them placed exactly the same, I would turn off the snap when I got over to this point, and I would just connect up to it. Okay, So that's your choice. Um, just remember, when you have the snaps on, it can skew the item that you're drawing onto a funny angle if you're not careful. So um, sometimes it's better to start it on the snap and then turn it off if, if needed, if, uh, if the two midpoints didn't align correctly. All right. So with this done, uh, I'm going to take a quick look at our 3D. And there we go. There's our railing. It's not sitting quite right right now. And if I spin around here, you're going to see this one sitting up in the air. There's an explanation for this. Uh, this one is finding a floor system because it's tying into a wall. So it's, uh, the, the railings try to be smart in that it's trying to find a floor system. This one here is finding the wall that's below a four inch slab. So of course it's sitting down into that, that space. So we can edit these quite easily by editing the railing. It'll come up and if you go into your, um, your posts, uh, in here, I'm going to change this to four inches because it says it's 11 and 5 H, which is exactly our floor system depth. Okay, and pick OK, and that should drop it back down. You can always try repeat edit and see if it takes, and it does. So that's perfect. That just applied that same change that we made to the first railing in onto the second railing, and that pops it up exactly where you want it. So as you can see, um, when you're drawing railings, you're drawing down the center of the railing, and we centered these on the structural. They're, they're decorative, but in reality, they are structural. They're holding up the beam. Um, they, it will center them on those using the cursor snap options. All right, we can further edit that railing, obviously, at this point, and go into the mid posts and put in intermediate posts, and you can change it to, say, three in which case it's going to draw the, the intermediate posts in for you, or you can change that back to two if you think you have too many. Okay, and there you go. And if you didn't like the color of the, you know, the, the post that you have there, um, you can always come in here and uh, do a surface copy paste. You can match the railing by just clicking on the railing and then clicking on the post. All right. I can even do that beam that's up there if it was going to be clad. All right, so that's working on uh, a part that has a structural slab uh, or a suspended slab over, a, over a, a crawl space. So the next issue that we're going to take a look at is if you're taking a look at the, um, the deck uh, condition. So in this case, I've placed a post back here on this drawing. I've made it solid just so it's a little bit easier for us to see on the, on the deck structure itself. But this has been drawn as a deck. So on this condition, I'm going to draw a railing that goes between the wall and here. And this is different because it is drawn over top of a deck itself. So we're going to go now to draw deck, and we're going to pick on railing again. And this time, I'm going to go to deck railing. and Let's just pick um, a standard square, nice contemporary looking railing, and I pick OK. Now, if I use the same condition, the same method as I used on the front, um, it's going to go to the center of the post, and I'm going to draw down to the, to the wall, and I'm going to turn off my snaps because it's finding items I don't want it to, and it's going to connect. 
you'll notice it didn't go to the center of the post. Now, this might have been the condition that the, the question spawned from, is what it did is it lined up with the outside face of this, the uh, ring joist on the deck itself, the structural joist on the outside edge. Um, so what we have here is a difference in that it's sitting over top of the deck. So what I need to do is edit the actual deck. Now, this is the part that may not... Uh, be intuitive to you initially because you've drawn a railing. You want to control the railing placement, but in fact, the railing placement is controlled by the uh, substrate, the, the, the deck that it's drawn over top of. So we go to editing the deck, and under the main um, tab for the deck, at the bottom, you'll see position rail. And it has a line, and it says no, but what you want to do is set it to inside. Now, if my post is um, eight inches thick, and I've lined it up with the out, with the with the joist or what have you. I can offset this in, so it's offset in half of its width right now. I can push that in to say uh, four, four point five inches, and you'll see that it pushes it in the, the appropriate distance. So uh, depending on where I've put that post, um, it, I can push the railing in, and that's where it's controlled from. So if if you watch. The, the green lines here represent my railing, and this will push it in to where I, where I want it, and then they will stay there. If at any time something is moving around and you're not too sure that you want it to, because we've automated something and, it, and it's moving on an automated basis, um, you can always turn off the cleanup option once you get into the common tab. Um, that pretty much kind of dumbs the item down to the point where it doesn't move itself around based on... Um, what it thinks it's supposed to do. So that's another thing you can keep in mind is that once you get something where you want it, if it keeps going back, it's probably automatically cleaning up to a positioning um, that we've we've coded into the program intentionally for a, a, a very good reason, but not to say that, that it's always going to be the condition you're looking for. All right. So hopefully that answers your questions about the, the railing placement. I'm just going to go to the rear deck. Um, so we've drawn that deck in, that, that railing in there. Um, the other options that were available was outside, so you can push the railing to the outside. Um, typically, you're going to go to inside, and that is a distance from the outside of the stringer, or the ring joist, if you like, to the center of the railing. So in the, the default condition was one and three quarters of an inch, which is one half of the railing thickness, or width, which is three and a half inches. All right. So. Um, let's move on to uh, our next question was taking a look at some uh, window options and we've got a window right here so I'm just going to zoom it up I'm gonna shift over a bit too, not so far and you can see we're we're very white in uh, all of our colors right now we don't have any other options set so what we're going to do is um, see if we can take a look at that and uh, modify some of the frame colors on the exterior and how can you do this in a fairly global manner was kind of the, the gist of the question. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to pull up a new 3D actually is what I'm going to do and we'll take a look at it from the front. I'm going to pull up a textured view from, from scratch here. And we're going to pull up material right from the right from the ribbon bar. And in the ribbon bar, we're going to take a look at the openings. So that's just going to regenerate. Um, and we're going to take a look at there's a couple things in here. You would think it'd be uh, framing. Framing will give us white based on if we were to go all the way up. I'm just going to. Uh, expand the openings that you have up here and if you were to actually open up all these you'll see that all the individual items are here so I can actually go in and actually edit on the item itself or I can go to the top and control all of this and you'll notice that on the individual instance anything that has uh, an inherit checkbox selected on it um, the checkbox in indicates that it's going to look above to the project level to look for the actual color that we have set there and it's going to inherit it from there. So I can override that by clicking on this. I can 
turn that off and I can click on this. I can go to color swatches and let's say we want to put in something dark. Um, you can do that at that stage. Okay. Now, um, if you really want to, to make these changes on a more global um, basis, go to the openings level and check it there and that's where you want to make those changes. So we're going to take a look at uh, bead. I'm going to um, change that. Everything looks good there. And we're going to go down to framing. Pick it there, bead. I'll go a little darker on that. And the other one is your sash. So you're going to slide down to sash and pick it there. And we are still on our opening level. Yep. That's an awful color. Let's go with the darker color. There we go. All right, pick OK. And we're going to flip that over. I'm going to use the... Uh, to look at surface to pull us up a little bit closer and, and you will see that it has changed that color. Now it will change it through the frame of the of the window and um, gives you a better indicator as to what you're going to have on the actual home when you when you pick your windows. It may not be the best choice with the with the white siding that we have on this particular house but it gives you an idea of how you can change them. So just remember that if it has inherit it's going to go looking above and and pick from that from the, the higher level. So if you have Inherit checked, um, you want to uncheck that. Um, if you want to make it uh, an individual window that's got a different frame color, but if you want it to look to the top, or le top level, change it at that level and then make sure the Inherit option has been checked. So hopefully that answers your question as, with regards to the easiest way to make this change. Um, we are looking at other options uh, as windows are evolving. They're constantly evolving. One of the things that is new to windows is the, uh, uh, the ability to mix and match your, your cladding on the exteriors. So uh, I have seen a suggestion um, came in from a, from a customer not too long ago regarding that, the ability to separate them out. Now, we can separate them out right now, but right now that sash and the frame does go all the way through. So if you're doing an interior, you may want to just go back to your openings, flip them back to white and um, or, or wood grain, what have you, whatever color you're looking for on the interior view of your window frames. All right. Flying through some stuff here. Time's flying by. Let's take a look at um, really quickly. Uh, one of the one of the things that we was added a couple versions back was plan sets. So when we're taking a look at plan sets, um, I'm looking at sample drawings right now, and the sample drawings have plan sets already uh, created for you. So it's a it's a really good place to go in and take a look at. Um, uh, how they're set up, um, what they're capable of. Now, we haven't touched on everything in our plan sets, uh, but we've, we've added your typical, your typical drawings in. So I'm going to open up under plan sets uh, just a really quick overview on how you actually create one, and then we'll take a look at one that's already made. So right-clicking is the way you uh, typically get into creating a plan set, and you just click on add plan set, and you can give it a name, and you can call this... Um, we already have construction, and my, draw, my typing is just awful. It's never gotten better, as some of you know me from the past. Anyway, um, you, you put in your name for the entire set of plans, and then you come back down into here, and you can pick whatever size you want. So you might want an architectural D size. You can customize that size. You can see that it updates down here, and then you can customize it from there. But uh, architectural D, 36 by 24. You can add borders in. Now, these will go and look at our title block folder, which we have set up for you, and you can add or modify the ones there into this folder. So you can come in here, and you're going to look for one that's got the appropriate size, obviously. Um, so a 24 by 36 architectural D border is going to be the bottom corner border, and you pick open. So we're just setting up our, our template basically here. And uh, we can go into our watermarks and you can put in here that it says preliminary, not, not for construction. That'll be a watermark that will print across your drawings just to uh, 
delineate that they're not to be used for construction or, you know, that um, uh, if, if you're worried about them being ripped off, you can put your company name across it so people know. And then you can give it a name and you can call it um, like floor plans, what have you. And then you pick OK. There's an option there to display as printed as well. Now, the question that came in was, how does this differ from multi-drawings? I still see when I when I go go in, um, there's still a multi-drawings option down there. The only reason that's there is for sets of drawings that were created using multi-drawings in the past. All right, uh, it's not to say that plan sets um, didn't originate from a multi-drawing. They did. Uh, they are a way of assembling drawings onto one sheet. But we have really grown this this tool up immensely, um, and that that required a, a number of changes, and we did change the way that we uh, look at it and the way we interface with it, and so it it, beca it it became its own entity, and that's why we have now plan sets added in. Uh, multi drawings are still there, so if you have a set of drawings from you know version 10 that you're pulling up, and there happens to be a multi drawing there, it would still be supported as long as multi drawings show up there. All right, so what we are going to do is uh, just take a quick look. The, the nice thing with uh, plan sets is I can even take um, live 3D views. I can take my exterior view and I can drag that onto the screen, all right, um, onto this page and, and print that. So I, but the, the real benefit is in the ease of use to, to drag these drawings out onto the page. Um, whatever mode it's in is what it's going to show up as, and this particular, this particular one, um, was in roof mode when I opened it up. So I can I can edit this and you can change the uh, the mode that it shows up in right on this on this edit. So you just right click and it comes up and you can you can take a look at this. So if this title block is set up to print at a quarter inch scale on a D sized piece of paper, I can adjust the scales right on here to uh, drop it down to an eighth inch for this particular drawing. Um, that kind of thing, you can put in custom scales, uh, different visibilities. Um, I'm going to do a different one now. I'm going to, uh, this is the floor plan that I was working on. I'm going to drag it out. There it is. Um, you can drag it out again and drop it over here. Okay, so when you're looking at this, it's, it's scaled down a little bit because it had to try and fit into the space that was allotted to it, and then you can modify it from there. The other thing I can do is I can actually crop this view. So it gives you a, a box, at which point I can say, well, this one I just want to show the deck area. So I just, I just go in here, and the red box will indicate the shaded area, indicates what will show up, and I just click to place it. And then when I move my mouse away from it, that's the piece that shows up. All right, so much more user friendly. Um, you've got auto labels on the on the floor plans and so on. It's a it's a really powerful tool. Um, we're also showing you what it's going to print as. So as far as pen weights and so on, um, it's a great tool. So uh, get used to using plan sets. Uh, if you're not used to using multi drawings, don't learn now. Just use plan sets. All right. So that's the big that's. Um, that's the biggest thing is the ease of use and the flexibility and our ability to bring in um, 3D views, that kind of stuff, right onto it, uh, whereas multi-drawing was very rigid it, it, in that it, it allowed you to bring in drawings and scale them accordingly. Very cutting edge at the time. Um, plan sets is uh, the big brother. It really brings a, a lot more to the table. All right. Now, another piece, um, same customer is asking this other question. How do you paste in or add in uh, a new facade? Uh, so you want to place something on this particular drawing that you created somewhere else and you have trouble being accurate with it. Um, this leads into a lot of different uh, avenues here. Um, so I'm going to show you what I, what, I, what I prepared before I did this. Um, I took that front elevation. I resaved it. I stripped out everything except... Uh, that front gable that you saw on the uh, on the top right corner here, and what I want to do is I want to place this um, this rough hewn timber truss shape up into that gable on this elevation, but I you know, I drew it somewhere else. Um, I'm going to take a look at some better options for doing this. Um, in 
that you can look into. But uh, in, in an effort to get this onto this drawing in an accurate way, I'm just going to show you how that can be done because I'm pretty sure that's what the question was about. So let's say we have this drawn somewhere else. Okay, it's on a separate drawing. I want to get it over to this front elevation. I just want to get this piece over there. Um, if I right-click on an item, there's an add, add selection option. So I could go through and I could add selection to everything. Or I can hit the control button and hold down my left mouse button and drag a box over it, which will highlight everything. All right. And then if I go up to edit, I can uh, copy to the soft line clipboard. And it's going to ask me a question here because some of these lines I actually took from the elevation that was generated and offset them. So they are generated by soft plan. And there's other lines that I drew in. So I want to copy everything because I want the entire thing. All right. Um, so now it's in the clipboard. I go back to my front elevation over here and I can, I, I can, in reality, I can erase stuff off of here and so on. I'm just going to drop it in on top so you can see what we can do here. Um, now, there's a couple options here. When I say pot, uh, paste from softline clipboard, if I had drawn this in exactly the same position as this drawing was here, which I did because I took it from an elevation and I just modified it, I can actually say hold position and it will drop it in right in place, in which case I just go in and I erase out the stuff I didn't want. It should have been anyway. I might have moved it a little bit. Sorry. Um, I'm going to undo that, and now I'm just going to open up some some white space here, and I'm going to say paste from soft plan clipboard. I'm going to say pick position, and there it is, and I'm going to drop it over here somewhere. Okay. Now, if I wanted to get this entity over into this space, there's a, a couple different options here, but the the best one is to use a block move which means I'm going to pick that entire area, okay? And there's an option up here on, this, on the status bar that you may not really notice unless someone shows it to you, as I'm doing now, uh, select move point. So when I select that, there again, it's, it's highlighted in yellow, meaning it's active. I, I highlight this area. Now it's going to wait for me to pick a point. What's the best way to pick an exact point? You got it. You go back to what we looked at first thing uh, in today's session, and that was using the snap modes. So I can go up here and I can turn on snap, and at that point I can pick that that corner right there, click that. Now I'm attached to that exact point, and I can zoom in to my. Um, I'm going to actually unlock as well, which is um, also up on the top bar. But if you hit the F12 key. That will allow you to uh, unlock your cursor because we want to move both horizontal and vertical at the same time. And at that point, I can find um, a point on here just by moving my mouse until I find that point that I want to place it and then click. And that will place it exactly where I want it. Okay. So hopefully that answers that question for you. Actually, I wanted to go to the, um, the upper one, I believe. I had allowed for that already. So I want to go to there, and that will place it perfectly in place for me. Now, to go beyond what I, what I just showed you, um, the real best way to deal with this would be using uh, building options um, in that I can have different facades on the same drawing um, by uh, without going into full depth on this, but... Um, on the set of drawings, if, if I drawn initially with a gable on here and I put the gable vent up there and bricked the face of it, that could be set to building option one. Um, so I can I can um, go into my building options and I would I would name a building option accordingly. Um, so I could say brick face, and I could do another one, and I could name it. Um, stone with um, timber, something like that. Um, and then any of those entities that you draw, if I draw that roof in and I put in the, the gable end and, and all this, I can set these to different options right on the right on it. Um, so if I was to turn that on, and this isn't an entity right now, it's just a bunch of lines, but you can actually... Uh, 
edit your brick. And I can set this to, um, to brick face, in which case when I pick OK, um, if I don't have it turned on, it will, um, maybe I didn't have it set correctly there. That should, that will, it, it'll turn on and off the items you want. You want to set this up um, initially on your floor plan. When you're putting your roof in, you're going to set up your gable ends, your hip edges, that sort of stuff, and uh, generate it as such so that when, when it generates, you can then regenerate it with a new roof on it and assign different building options so that within the one set of drawings, you can have multiple building options. You don't have to cut and paste and place items on the drawings. You don't need to take that bathroom and reorganize it. You draw it once, set it to a building option, turn that building option off and redraw it again and set that to a new building option so that when the customer comes in, you can say you can have this one or this one. Uh, this is an upgrade. This is the one that comes with the, with the original package and you can just flip them on and off. Essentially, um, uh, putting all the building options right into one set of drawings so that you don't have to uh, cut and paste or put building, put, um, extend out the back of the house when it wasn't already drawn there originally, okay? All right, so uh, hopefully that answers your questions with regards to that. I think your initial question was simply, how do I move something with accuracy? And I think I've shown you that quite well. Uh, I would like you to uh, think about building options. If you have any questions about how you can implement that yourself, um, it would mean just having different facades. It could mean a different, uh, a different window style on the front, a different roof style, um, a, a breakfast bar, a, a breakfast nook pushed out the back, that kind of thing. We would love to see people using the building options a little bit more and making use of them. Not only does it show up in your 3D, it'll also show up on your elevations, your cross sections, and so on. Okay. So the last thing I wanted to show you with regards to this is, let's say that I've gone back in here and I'm going to... Um, I'm just going to erase some stuff in here. I'm going to take the... Uh, actually, I'm going to take it all out. No, I don't want to. Just, I'll leave the roof in. All right. So let's say that we edit this roof and we put, a, say, a, a hip-style roof on the front of this. Um, and ugly, but you get the idea. Same thing off here. Okay, so let's say you've, you've, you've modified your roof somewhat. Um, and it's going to be an ugly little, ugly front on it, but um, there's our elevation, the way we, we generated it already. Now you can see that we've put some, some work into this, and we've uh, placed uh, notes and dimensions and dashed some lines and so on, and a grade line and so on. So some time has been invested in finishing off this elevation. But what you want to do is make some, some minor changes to the drawing, but you don't want to have to regenerate the entire elevation and, and have to put all those notes back in. Um, uh, is there, sorry, the quick note came up here. Is there a way to keep cursor lock on without hitting? Uh, no, and it's not the kind of thing you want to leave on. Like I said before, sometimes it will um, skew your walls or lines. It's the kind of thing you want to be turning on and off. You can do it up the top there, but um, it's not the kind of thing you want on all the time because we do draw very well in ortho and we have automatic snaps for um, cleaning up corners and so on. It, it is really the kind of thing you want to turn on and off as you need it. Okay, so um, so we've got an elevation. We've, we've done some work to it, but now I'm back in on the second floor, and um, which, what pitch are we on here? We've got a really low pitch. What's this one? It's a six. So let me change this up to a six inches. And that's why this one looks wacky, too. There we go. So... Well, I put a couple of hips in here, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to take a look at my front uh, front view again, and I'm going to save my changes. So it's going to generate a new front elevation view, not the drawing, but the view with those changes in, incorporated into it. Uh, we have a uh, little bit of extra over on the side there. Uh, probably our gable uh, was run up. 
But if I was to generate this now, and if I go to File, Save, Save As, and I save it as a soft plan drawing, and this time I want to save it over top of the front elevation that I have, just want you to be aware of how you can modify that front facade. So let's say that you have made those changes to the front facade, and you don't want to have to copy and paste and do all that work to get them into place. Um, you can do it this way. So you've generated a new image of the front elevation. It's got our railings and so on incorporated into it as well. So it says that the file you selected to save over contains items you have drawn, it, meaning the, uh, the dimensions and the notes and the dashed lines and so on. So you've done some work to the final elevation. You're about to overwrite all that. But we ask you the question, do you want to merge the elevation into that drawing, keeping the items that you have drawn? So anything that wasn't generated by soft plan um, will be left alone. So this gives you the option to keep both the stuff you've drawn and the stuff that we've just generated by making those changes. So I'm going to say merge as opposed to overwriting it all. So the walls and so on that stayed the same, they're going to stay the same and the other stuff will go. Not to say that this is going to be complete when you're done. You're going to have to maybe uh, regenerate some of your paint because items have moved around but it will allow you that flexibility to not have to put all your notes back in. Um, so now when I go to my front, you can see that it's got a bit of both in there. So the paint that was added, I can uh, regenerate this paint. Um, I'm going to edit the paint, and and I can regenerate. That's the model paint that I got that time. This time I want to regenerate just the... Um, oh, so that tells me that my paint seed point is outside of that area. You know what? Cut my losses. Um, I can erase that just as easily, and I can go to... Uh, Draw, select, click, and add it back in that way. Okay, so draw select allows you to pick something else that's on the drawing that's the same and allows you to place it back in again. And then, of course, you just erase out any lines that you don't need. These were left behind from the original. And that takes you back to where oh, I just got rid of my paint by accident there as well. A little too rambunctious. All right, so that's a really good tool. It allows you to save over top of an existing elevation you've put some work into while incorporating the changes you've made to your actual floor plan. So we're running short on time. Um, I've taken a look at the openings, um, took a look at the railings, and um, we've taken a look at the uh, front facade and, and how you can save stuff over as well. Um, we took a look at the uh, plan sets and the differences between those in multi-drawings. And I just want to take one quick look at something that people do ask for. I don't really recommend getting it turned off, but we do get this question um, on occasion, so I thought I'd better take a quick look at it while we had the option. Um, when you're drawing, you get the automatic dimensions that pop up on the screen. Um, I like them, and most people do like them. There's people that would rather place those themselves. Um, there is an option right in your setup options if you don't like it. So file, uh, system options, system options, and in there, auto extension and dimension is a checkbox there so that um, if I am drawing walls, I don't get those dimensions coming off. With it turned on, and you'll see what just happened there. I have my snap still on, and now my wall is not per perpendicular. So uh, there's a very good reason why I you would want to turn off your snaps so that when you're drawing these, you can draw between those two points and it will stay orthographic to the screen. Okay. Um, so that was file system options, system options. I'm going to turn my back, mine back on because I prefer to have them on. And that just means that when I'm drawing these walls, those dimensions and extensions will appear. All right. All right. I'm going to take one quick look back. I did have one question here. I can't honestly say that I read it that closely. Um, I'm going to create an arched trim effect over a porch. Um, hmm. 
I think your best bet is to actually have a wall in there with the arch over it would be probably the best way because it depends what that arch is actually cut into, whether it's brick or whether it's uh, stuccoed or, or what have you. Um, so the question was how can I create an arch trim effect? Um, uh, the arches are best suited to openings. Openings are placed in a wall. So the best bet would be to actually draw the wall in there, uh, whether even if there's minimal walls showing, that would um, that would give you that that effect, I think. Um, so yeah. All right. Well, uh, we are dead on 45 minutes. I don't want to keep you too long, as it's a beautiful Friday, and I think some of you may be cutting out for the for the afternoon. So I thank you very much for joining me today. If you do have any questions following today's class, feel free to send them in to support. That's S-U-P-P-O-R-T at softplantech, that's T-E-C-H dot com at the end. Uh, we'd be glad to address your questions that way. And um, hopefully you had a really good session today. I really hope that uh, you'll join us for some of the others that we have as we, uh, we take this right through to the end of July. Um, we are going to, um, next week on July 1st is uh, deck design, and uh, I think you get a lot out of that. Uh, last week we had um, just an intro to soft plan, and the week before that was bathroom. So you can check out the, uh, at least the first one I know has been posted to our website, and um, hopefully you will you'll catch up with that stuff if you didn't man manage to get into those sessions originally. Right, so once again, thank you very much for joining me today, and uh, take care and have a great weekend.